begin the Daf, the Septic Subas, Daf Ein Vav. We begin six lines down at the top of the Amr. We're in the middle of a discussion regarding how to understand a seemingly contradiction in a teaching regarding the halacha of the previous Mishnah. When we have a doubt regarding the woman, as we said, that she had blemishes. We, di- we differentiate between if she is Beves Avia or if she was Beves Bala regarding who has to bring the proof if she can collect the Ksuba without any proof. And we already had two approaches how to explain this, and we're on to the third approach in today's Da. She is corresponding to a concept in the Chesco, turning to the Chesco, and 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 the third interpretation. Ravashi's explanation about the contradiction. As we said in the Mishnah, he said, if we find the blemishes in our father's house during the engagement, he said she's not entitled to exude without proof. And the safe of the Mishnah said, if we find the Bishra Sabal, she is entitled to exude without proof. Which the Gemara assumes that there's no difference between Beves Avi and Beves Baal. So what's the difference? How do we explain that? So we had two approaches in the previous step. I'm going to explain the third approach. In the Gemara's discussion, the Gemara brings up a case of a Machlub Par Bechamar. Someone is swapping, look, you got a bull, I have a, I have a donkey, let's switch. So the owner of the donkey, he goes, he takes the cow. The owner of the cow didn't get a chance to get the donkey. He comes to his property, he sees the donkey's dead. Question is, who is the one that's going to get the loss? Is it the owner of the cow or is it going to be the owner of the donkey? Some of the important terms of consequence of today's is when you shaft an animal, you find then a needle inside the abdominal wall, from the basakaisis, which is a specific one of the four stomachs of a ruminant of a cow. If you find it in the doubled wall of the basakaisis, what the Allah is regarding kashras and tarfas. Whoever the suffix is it was uh, was found or created in his domain, he has to bring the raya, he has to bring the proof uh, to verify that suffix to win in the argument. Whenever there is a monetary exchange with something else, once one of the parties in the barter took that item, the other one automatically gets the ownership of the other object. So we begin the current daf. The Vain Vav, the Gemara, like we said, discussed the contradiction in the Mishnah. The Reisha said that if you find her blemish, the Vesavia, you find out that she has this big mole with some hair coming out of it, which is a blemish. So if you find the Vesavia, she's not entitled to exhibit that proof. We assume the woman existed before condition. On the other end, if, let's say you find the Mishnah Sabal, she already got married. She is entitled to exhibit that proof. We assume the woman did not exist before the condition. The question was about, like, what's the difference? Seemingly, it should not differentiate if it was before or after, as the Gemara had said in the previous daf, that it sounds like, and it was the first approach that the Gemara gave a better verbal lazar, that you're right, it's a machlikis between Emulu and Yeshua regarding who do we believe? Do we go with Hercheskes HaGuf, and therefore she would be believed, or don't? Do we say, let me appear on the Chaim, like Yeshua says, we go based on the Hercheskes moment of the husband, and if she wants to collect, she has to be a riot. So according to the first approach of the Gemara, given it's a machlekes tanoi, the Reish and the Seif are two different opinions. It doesn't make a difference if you find it Beves Sabal or Beves Aviyah. That was approach number one. Approach number two, Rabbi had said, yes, no, it's all according to Mamil. It does depend where it's found. Kanim to Kanoyu. If you find it by the father's house, you say, no, this is where you found it, this is where it started, and therefore it's going to be their loss. If you find it by the husband's domain, you say, Kanim to Kanoyu, and say, no, this is where it happened, and therefore it's going to be his loss, and therefore she could click without a, uh, without a proof. That was the first two approaches. Now the Gemara brings a third approach. As the Gemara, six lines down at the top of the Yamad Rabashi, Amad. Here, he's going back to explain, like Rabbi did, that the halacha of our Mishnah is all like one time of that written wheel. That the cheskes haguf that she has is better, which is a girl who's generally not born with blemishes, and we presume that it happened later. So how do we explain the Reisha? Well, the Reisha said that if you find it in her father's domain, her cheskes haguf is not going to help, and she's going to have to bring the raya. If she doesn't bring a raya, she could have collect the wife. Because interestingly, says the Gemara, it's not really her claim. It's her father's claim. You know why? When she's engaged, who gets her ksuba? It's her father gets the ksuba. So this is essentially what's called mono la'aba biodecha. That uh, the, the, uh, uh, there's a hundred dollars that my father has by you, which wouldn't work for, for you. That's his money. 
So essentially, the Gemara is saying, for the father, we're not going to say that her ches is going to have is going to help for him. So, whereas b'seifa, when it's beveis bala, it's biksuba abenusua, which belongs to her. So that's mana I have a hundred dollars by you, who's making the claim. You, your chazaka could help the one who's making the claim. The case of the Reisha, the father, she's still a, a narusa. The father still has rights in her. He's going to get her kesuba. So her chazaka cannot help his claim. But the case of the Sefer, when she's already married, she's getting the kesuba. Her chazaka will help her claim. And that's why there's a difference between the case of the Reisha and the case of the Sefer. However, Isabei, the Gemara asks, Ravacha Bereidera, Aviyah Rabashi, he asked from the following Brisa. Brisa says, Moidur Rameyer. Although Rameyer says that when she goes into the husband's domain, as we said in the Mishnah, it's on the husband to bring a raya, he agrees, regarding blemishes that really make sense that she had come with it from her father's household, which the Gemara assumes right now this means any blemish that you, you're not sure, you could say, you could say that it came from the father's household. Then the father is doing a raya, even though she really got married, she's already by the husband's domain. I'm not the question of am I? But why? Based on Ravash's interpretation, this is Mani Libi This is, she's already married, so who's getting the Ksuba? She's getting the Ksuba. So you should say, she remains with a Who cares that this is blemish that could have been here from before she got married? It doesn't make a difference. The whole reason why the case of the Reisha of Avesa Bia that it doesn't work is not because Chesga Guf doesn't work, it's because Chesga Guf doesn't work for the father. But Chesga Guf will work for herself. So who cares that it's a Rui Lohabi of Avesa Bia? I don't care. I don't care if it was Bia then. But Amai said, it's our Chesga Guf that's working in our favor. And she's getting it. She's coming to collect it. Says Gemara, no, how come I skin? What the case to a Torah out of here is not that a blemish that could have came from the father's household. It's that actually presume it came from the father's, father's household. The Torah B said this. She has an extra finger, an extra digit. But you can't say that it happened after she was engaged. Obviously, it was the before she got engaged, and therefore you don't have a ches kisagu. So therefore, that's why we're saying that she's going to have to bring a raya. Says the Gemara, you said this. Extra finger, my raya, my sister. What are you telling me that she has to bring a raya if it's a blemish? Even though she, you generally say when she got married, then she doesn't have to bring a raya. He has to bring a raya. Well, what type of raya is she bringing? That that the finger just popped out when she was uh, during the engagement. That she had, you know, some some Martian or some acid or whatever, something that just like popped out another digit. So said the Gemara, no, Raya, she has to bring a Raya, Jodov and the fire soul. She has to bring a proof that bring witnesses that he was looking at her sixth finger and saying, should we put the ring on that finger? Should we put it on the other finger? He obviously saw it. If somebody was okay with it, that's the Raya that she would bring that to get it. But if not for that, of course she doesn't have a Cheskis Agov, and therefore his Cheskis moment is definitely going to win out. From her, so therefore it's not difficult on Rabashi because you don't see any contradiction regarding his halacha of the difference between mana la abba biyatcha or mana li biyatcha. If that's the answer for the different generation of seifa, this halacha of saying that rulo la b'mesavi is too much something else, an extra finger, something like that, but a regular blemish that could have or could have not happened, then of course you're right. She wouldn't have to bring a, a raya even if we think it could have been there from beforehand, because it's mona libiyot, it's saying her chesk is up working for her own claim, where yes, that wins out against his chesk is mom. So again, we had three approaches to explain the ratio and the seif of our Mishnah. To differentiate between if we find the moment of Bebe Sabi or Bebe Spalo, we had Rebbe Lazo, it says that it's a machlikist anoim, it's a machlikist anoim, it's a who do we believe? Do we go with his chesk is a moment, or do we go with chesk is a moment? And it wouldn't make a difference really if it's Bebe Sabi or Bebe Spalo. Or, as like Rabbi said, that Yes, it's all like in Lille, we go to Rechez Kizuguf, but we say the concept of what's called Kanem Tzikanoye, where we find it is where we're going to say this is where it happened. So if, it, if we find the Beis we're going to say it happened Beis Avi, if we find Beis Avi, we say it happened Beis Avi. Or do we say like Abashi, who he says that we go to Rechez Kizuguf. So that's why it works in the Seifa when she comes to collect her Ksuba when she's married. So why does it work in the Reisha? Because she's not collecting it, the father's collecting it. Her Rechez Kizuguf cannot work for the father's collecting of her Ksuba. Now, related back to the halacha of a Mishnah, Amar Yehud Mishmo, there's the following Amaroic teaching. Hamachlev parabachamar. So, two people in the good old days, they didn't have money. So they go and they swap things. Say, okay, I'll give you my iPad and you give me a year's worth of bread or whatever it is. So they're switching his cow for his donkey. 
Umasha balachamur does a pala. So what do you do? I mean, the guy says, okay, I have it in my barn. You go get it from me, and you I'll get it from you. So the owner of the donkey goes, and he does mashich. He pulls the cow, and that's how it's kinda the cow. Now the donkey was all the while by the donkey in the stable and by the owner of, uh, in his house. Now the mission condition of Chachesh and teach a very important halacha. What's called kalanasa dam and ba'acher. When you have something that's a monetary value that you're switching for something else, what's called barber. Once one person merits one of the items that he does mashich it himself, the other guy automatically becomes responsible for whatever happens to the item that's being swapped with, wherever it is. So the moment that this owner of the donkey did mashich on the para, the donkey right now is owned by the owner of the para, even though he didn't touch it, because he already switched it. The moment that you do on one item, the other items are automatically the other person's item. Okay, fine. So this, so this uh, donkey belongs to the owner of the cow. But the owner of the cow was, was late. He was lazy. He came to maybe a day later. And he's coming to do Mashiach on the Chamor. He comes there and the donkey is dead. So this guy is saying, wait a second. Until you didn't do Mashiach on my par, your donkey was already dead. So it died by you. The owner of the donkey is saying, no, it's not true. I Only after I did Mashiach on your cow did it die. So it was already yours. It's your dead donkey. That's the Shiloh whom, in whose domain did it die. Says Shmuel, Abala Chamar Lehebirai. The owner of the donkey, he has to prove, He has to prove that his donkey was still alive when he did Mashiach on the pot. If he doesn't bring a raya, it's his loss. He has to give the cow back to the owner of the cow. And the Tana Tuna, and the Tana of our Mishnah, that talking about the blemishes of Kala, as we said in our Mishnah, we were talking about a Kala of, of the the daughter, the, 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 the bride, who we said that if you find blemishes by her, that halacha supports me. That's what Shmuel said. Says the Gemara, Hai Kala. Which one of the halachas of our Mishnah supports this teaching of Shmuel? As the Gemara says, Elam, as we turn to the base, Kala, the base of Leo. If it's the case of the Reisha, which is that they found the blemishes when she was still, again, remember the engagement was for a year. So they, they came and they saw something, a blemish on her during the engagement, and they come to the Rav when she's still engaged. What did the Mishnah say? Mishnah said, if you found the blemishes during her engagement, the father has to make proof that no, my daughter didn't have the scab when she was engaged. She got this later, some dog bit her, and she has a scab. Now, to understand what the Gemara is trying to say, is that Shmuel would hold like Rebbe Lazar. Remember, we had three approaches how to explain the halacha of our Mishnah. Approach number one, that Rebbe Lazar says, it's a machlik is tanoi. Now, what that means to say, is that the Tana of the Reisha, who said, that was Rabbi Shua, who said that it's the father has to be Uriah, although we spoke about it in the Beis if you recall from the previous stuff, we said, really, Rabbi Shua doesn't differentiate it would even be, even if they went to Chup already, even if she's Bebeis Bala, the father would still have to bring Uriah, even though the Suffolk was not born in his domain. They only found this scab when he's married for two weeks. He says, what is this? You have this huge scar over here? Ah, Mekech Tais. Rebbe explained, that's really sure. He says, let me be on the Chaim. We don't know based on how word when it happened. He has a Cheskis Amaman. You want to collect from me, Ksuba? You bring the Raya. That was how Rebbe Laza explained the ratio of the Mishnah. So obviously, you cannot collect money. Misafik. If that's what the Allah of the Mishnah is talking about, oh, so Shmuel is saying the case of the donkey is the same thing. This owner of the donkey, let's call him Reuben, it's going to get confusing. Uh, he went and he took Shimon's cow. So he can't hold on to Shimon's cow, Misafik. Now, although that the Suffolk was born, Bishus meaning we only discovered this problem that it was dead when, when Shimon already owned it, because Reuven had done Mashiach on his cow, so Shimon then comes a day later till he till he gets all down there to get the donkey and it's dead, so the subject is nailed Bishus Shimon, so. Shmuel is saying 
ah, this is exactly the halacha of Mishnah. Get a little complex. Why? Because based on the way Rebbe Laza explained the ratio of our Mishnah, of when Nintis Kala Bevesavio, which Rebbe Laza had explained that's going to be sure who says, that is, she cannot collect Mitzvah again, really, it's not even Bevesavio, it's even Beves Bala. So the Sabbath is being noiled in, 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 in the husband's domain. And still Rebbe Shua held, which is the halacha of, of the ratio of the Mishnah according to Rebbe Laza, that she cannot collect. So, Shmuel is saying that the same thing is over here, which is, the guy already took his cow, so now that when we find the, cow, the, the, the donkey dead, it's being noiled by the other person, and still, still the owner of the donkey, Reuben, cannot collect it until he brings a raya. That's the same halacha like the Reisha of the Mishnah. Says the Gemara, no. And we're going to have a few of these, so just get ready. <laughs> Me, dummy? Is this comparable? <laughs> Hasim over there, of course, logic tells us that the father has to bring a ride. Why? Because he's mighty mechavedoi. You want to collect, because this marriage is ending, you want to collect exuba from the husband. Oh, so the mighty abrai, you're mapping. The father has to bring a proof and collect money. We always know if you're being mighty, you have to bring a raya. Whereas, from there you want to learn that to hach over here, to your halacha shmuel, who's muchzik in this cow right now? The owner of the donkey, Ruvain. And you want to tell me that that the owner of the donkey, he has to bring a proof to maintain money by him? That's not the same halacha. Where do you get off telling me that you have to bring a riot to maintain what you already have? It's not the same exact case. We explained it very well. It sounded very convincing. But it's not the same exact thing. It's very similar. A lot of things match up. But one thing that's glaring, uh, glaring uh, in its difference is, are you being mighty or you're being mikey? The case of the Mishnah, you're being mighty. Here you're being mikey, you want to hold on to the cow that you already got. So yeah, it's, it's a suffix, I guess, no, you live and it's someone else's thing. But I said, you're being, you're mochzik already. So how can you compare the cases? So I'm Baba. He says, you're right. What Shmuel is saying, a riot to my halacha for the Mishnah, is the safe of the Mishnah. Which case is that? That is Kalabaveis Chamel. That is the case of the daughter in law in her father in law's household. When we said, when she's already married, we said, when she's Beveis Bala, we said, Al Habala Hibi Raya. Now, if you recall, if we're still going with Rabbi Laz in the first of the three approaches, how to explain the halacha of the Mishnah, the safe was said by who? By Rebbe Gamliel, who disagrees really, even in the case of the Reisha. Although we said it, Beveis Bala, we really said, like, Deslav Davka, even if you find the Beveis Avia, which is, if the husband is the one who has to be Uriah, that subject was not Nel Bishus, right? It was Nel Bishus Ha'av, by the Kala, in her father's household. And still, we are saying, according to the husband has to bring a raya to exclude the rights of her ksuba. Now, that raya that the husband has to bring is not lahoiti. He's not collecting. It's lahaksik, is to hold on to his own money. And still he has to bring a raya. Ooh, Shmuel, that's the same thing over here. For sure, in my case of the donkey. Of course, the owner of the donkey has to bring a raya to hold on to his cow. Because he's holding on to Shimon's cow. If you're telling me the safe of our Mishnah, we said when she was Nidnes or the Again, it's confusing because according to the laws, it doesn't make a difference between Shusa Ab and Shusa Ba. It's just a Rasha and the Seifa. And, and Rasha and Rabbi Shua and the Seifa and Lil. And really, Rabbi Shua and Rabbi Lil don't differentiate the Beveza 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 Bala. It's either one. But it's just saying those obvious cases. So according to the Seifa, that according to Allah is going to give him leel. That when you when you nichnislusha sabal, the husband has to bring a raya that she had the blemish before, and if not, he has to give it the ksuba. Which really we said is even if you find the Bishur Sabiya. So in that case, when when they're engaged and he sees this huge scab and he's like, wait a second, Malka, I never saw you having the scab. It's like, oh, what happened after we got engaged? Well, I don't know that. So what did Leel hold? Leel holds, we go to her chaskasagov. He means that when they got engaged, she did not have the scab. 
He has to bring a raya if he wants to make sure that she doesn't get a ksuba. What type of case is that? I have to bring a raya that I could hold on to my money? You bring a raya and try and neglect. No, Rumi says, you have to bring a raya lahachzik. So if in that case he has to bring a raya, so over here, when Reuben, the owner of the donkey, he took Shimon's cow in. Shimon comes to get his donkey and the donkey's dead. In that case, for sure, Reuben on the donkey has to bring a raya to hold on to Shimon's cow. Even in the case of Emilio, it's your own money you have to bring a raya. So here, in the case of Shmuel, for sure, that's the raya he's bringing from the Mishnah, that to hold on to someone else's cow, for sure you have to bring a raya, mitzad the suffix, that it was, uh, that it happened in his, in when it was already his ownership. The Gemara says, no, it's still not comparable. Hasam over there, yes, it makes sense that the husband has to bring a raya because the girl's cheskis al-gov, where we presume her body did not have any blemishes, supports the ability of the father to collect the ksuba. So you could say, you maintain her on the chazaka. And therefore, Baal Maisi Rai, the husband has to bring proof that no, she had this scab, she had this blemish before they got engaged. And then, then he'll be able to. Uh, to, 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 to take away and, and, and disintegrate the, the chazaka that the father has. But he has to bring a raya first, because or else the father has the chazaka. But hoch over here in Shmuel's case, Baal hachamor maisi raya. You tell me that the owner of the donkey has to bring a proof. Umoikim chazokei biyodei? To maintain his chazaka? Meaning, as Rashi explains, the cheskes haguf of the animal supports whom in this case? supports Reuven, the owner of the donkey. Because if you say that you maintain the donkey was on its previous chazaka at the time when Reuven did Mashiach on the cow, what do you presume the donkey was? You presume it was alive. And that means to say that in whose domain did the cow die? And did the donkey die? And the owner of Shimon, who was the original cow owner. So why do you require Reuven to bring a riot? They're not the same cases. The case of our Mishnah, which we thought of the culture came for sure, it's a riot to Shmuel, it's not the same thing. Because, yes, the husband has to bring a raya, because there's a cheskis haguf that's antagonistic to what he's claiming. The cheskis haguf supports the father that my daughter didn't have any blemishes. But here the cheskis haguf supports the owner of the donkey, that the donkey was alive when I did Meshicha. Why do I have to bring a raya to hold on to my money when the cheskis haguf supports me? So that's also not a good approach. So Rav Nachman Yitzchak, he was like, okay, we're going back to the Reish of the Mishnah. No, it was the Reish of the Mishnah that supports Shmuel. Kala b'beisavia, when the daughter-in-law is by her father still, where we require that the father has to bring a raya, even though the Cheskes HaGuf is supporting him, that we presume that she was not blemished when they got engaged. And like Rebbe Lazar, that he says the Reish is going like Rabbi Shua, which really we said that Rabbi Shua disagrees even in the case of the Seifa, that the father has an obligation to be Uriah, even when it's Nichnes Solo Shosabal, and even though they only discovered this problem when it's not in his Roshos, when it only happened, when only discovered it when she was raided by the husband. But then the question was, wait a second, how does that support Shabbos teaching? That's a raya that you have to bring, Lohoitzi, to collect the Ksuba from the husband. How could you compare that to the owner of the donkey that's holding on to the cow that it already has, and that's not lohitzi? No, the, 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 the proof is needed because it's even uli kedushin. It's for the father to hold on to the kedushin that he has, meaning when the woman gets married, there's a few things that happen. Up until now, we were discussing the kesuba. The kesuba is something that only when this marriage ends, then the husband has to pay out. So obviously if they're married now, and the, we talk about the ksuba, the father, the girl, they're trying to collect. You're trying to collect, you have to bring your raya. So how can you compare it to the case of the donkey, which is holding on to, not collecting? So they come on, no, we're not talking about ksuba. We're talking about the ring. When they got engaged, hadeyat mekudesh asli batabazu. Nice, beautiful ring, and gives her and she gets engaged. That ring that the girl already has, now the husband's saying, I never saw this scab that she has. 
on that ring that the father already has. That's what's saying that if the father doesn't bring a raya, you got to give it back. That's not lahaitzi. That is lahaitzi. That's holding on to. Ah, that's like Shmuel's teaching. That's exactly, now the cases match up exactly. Here we have a case where you're holding on to something and the suffix is being noiled b'shusa acher and even so you have to bring a raya l'hachzik to hold on to your, uh, your money that you already have from that other person. Moreover, the Gemara qualifies as well, and don't say this that I'm saying that you need to have a raya that is, is even to hold on to the condition that you already have, the girl already had the ring. Don't say that's only a libid man omar, that's only going according to one who says that kedushin, that in general, when you have the ring, it's lovely tibu and nitnu. It wasn't given, which the word tibia is like, uh, like it's uh, lost, like it's uh, sunk. That meaning, let's say the chasen dies before they get married. So, that you would have to give the kedushin back to the, fa- to the boy's family, that that's what it means, letibu and nitnu. So you might say that we're only saying this teaching, only according to one who says that lav letibu and It's not some, because you gotta give it back. So therefore, over here, when there's a kedushin misafik, we're not sure did she have the scab or not, so the, 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 the girl's family doesn't have such a strong support, because in general, if a kedushin is not, is not going to go through to marriage, you've got to give it back. So therefore, we would say she has to be your raya, which is a machlik in Baba Basu. So he's going, no, even according to the one who says the general kedushin, it's lost. You give the ring to the girl, you're not getting it back. It's only by definite kedushin. And then he could die. So then you're not giving back the ring. Our kedushin ties, but when it's mistaken kedushin, like over here, if she had the scab, he might see raya in, only if the father brings a proof, then yes, then he'll be able to hold on to the kedushin. Eloi, Eloi, if he does not hold on to the, if he does not bring a raya, he cannot hold on to the Kedushin. And again, that's just like Shemuel's teaching, which actually Rashi says, what's difficult is, how could the Gemara explain that Shmuel's teaching is being supported from our mission like Rebbe Lazar, that the ratio of the mission is going like Yeshua, and that supports Shmuel, who's saying the same exact idea, where you have to bring a raya to hold on to something that you already have because it's a suffix, and it's exactly Shmuel's case when we're swapping, there's a Kenyan going on over here, the girl is going to the husband and they're getting a ring in place. When here this guy's giving him a, a, a donkey and he's getting a cow in place. But we're saying that there's a suffix, what happened, at, what was going on at that moment? Do we say that the donkey was dead or not? The one who has the cow has to bring a raya, just like over here, the father of the girl has to bring a raya, that the girl did not have the blemish. But that's like Rabbi Yeshua. But Shmuel, as we brought it up in Beis Mabes, holds like the halakhs like a Mulil. So the Gemara says, so Rashi says, you're right. At the conclusion, the Gemara is not going to say Shmuel like this. But at this point, the Gemara is just saying that Shmuel is being supported from the Rashi Mishnah, which going like Rabbi Laz, the way he says, like Rabbi Shua. But you have a Maskana, we don't hold like that, because Shmuel does not pass like Rabbi Shua. He passes like Rabbi that we actually do go to the as a group. We, we say, uh, he has to make a right, not her. But the Gemara continues and says, Basically, the Gemara asks on Shmuel from the following price. Macha, a very unrelated halacha. Macha chanimtsis, if you find a needle, ba'ivi besakaisis, in the thickness of the reticulum, which is called the, the house of the cups, because it's actually in the shape of cups, where um, there's four stomachs in the cow, in the ruminant. At the end of the kedes, which is the paunch, it's the first stomach, near the hemsis, which is the third stomach, the omasam, omasam. So the second stomach is called the besa kaisis, which is like a kais. It's like a shape of a, of a, of a goblet. Now, there is, uh, around it by its edge, a thickness of a double wall, which is connected. Like Rashi brings from the French word redoubling. It sounds like doubling. 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 It's double. Now you find a needle that's stuck in the thickness of the wall. Now, since the wall of that stomach is very thick, it's possible that it didn't perforate, it didn't make a hole through the whole thing as a double wall. So, says the Braisa, if you find him it's sad echad, if you find that the needle is only visible on the inside, but it's not all the way through on the other side, sure, it's going to be kosher, because that didn't make a hole, that would make a trait. What's, what's, the, word of, what's the idea of a hole? A hole is a problem, that's why we have glot, because it's smooth, there's no circus, there's no, no adhesions, there's no lesions, there's no uh, place where it had a scab, because if it does, it means it had a hole. A hole is that it can't survive, and that's what a trafe is, because it's going to 
can't survive in such a toxic way where its food is coming out of its stomach. So it's saying there's only one side, it's not going to go through, it's not going to go into its, you know, uh, other systems inside that's going to cause any harm. So it's kosher. But the Schneid's done, if you find the hole through both sides, then tray of an animal is a tray for, it's a mortal defect, it can't survive like that, that's not a kosher animal, you can't eat that food. Now, continues the Raisa, Nimtzalev Koyer Dam. So, okay, we said from two sides can be trafer. Now, what happens if, if you find, let's say, a little bit of blood uh, where the hole is, but you do, you know, that means that it had the hole there before it different to trafer, because when the animal's alive, then it causes blood to come out. But Nimtzalev Koyer Dam, if you don't find any blood where the needle is stuck through, so be do shalakashkita, then you know that it made someone someone was walking by and the had on his tailor or whatever suit and some needle and went through uh, one of the shachtim. So that happened after shkita, and that's not gonna be a problem because or else it, it would it would it would bleed when you when you pierce it, but when it's dead, obviously not gonna have any blood. So then it's then it's okay. Now Puglut Piamaka. Let's say there's a scab by the opening of that wound. So be you do shashlishiyam kurim shkita, then you know that this already happened because it takes time for something to scan, you know that it happened three days before it was slaughtered. What's the significance of that? Is that if, let's say, the butcher, the butcher would buy the animals from the farmers. If the butcher bought it with them three days, obviously it's a mekach ta'us, and the owner has to give him back the money because he sold him a tray from. So that's the significance of if it has a scab. Now, if there's no scab by the opening of the wound, now, each one saying, the, the, the butcher saying, well, it had a hole before I bought it. Uh, the owner of the animal saying, no, it only got the, it only got the blemish one after I sold it. So there, how much make available, right? So the one who's trying to collect from the other one, that's what we always say when it comes to monetary law, make sure you're the one left holding the bag, like musical cheers, because whoever's holding the bag of money, the other one has to bring it right. So the price says, whoever's trying to collect from the other one, the money, he has to bring it right. Now, Again, here also health couple, but it gets a little bit uh, complex how to explain. But the Gemara concludes the question like this. Are you telling me that whoever has the money, the one who's trying to get his money from the other one, he has to bring a riot? So it comes out like this. V'yi, this was with the bride. So now the Gemara is asking the question on Shemuel. So you're telling me, V'yi, yohav tabach dame. Let's say the butcher already paid. You know, COD, he got, the, he got the meat, he got the animals. He gives, okay, Ralph, you gave me 10 animals. Gives him the money, and two days later he shuts the animal. Now, if he gave the money, you're telling me that he's the mite. He's like Ralph. These animals, they have, they have, they have, uh, they're trafers. Give me back my money. You tell me, no, no, no. How much We don't know when it happened. Allah will be right. You tell me. He has to bring a proof that it was trafer beforehand. So. You tell me that he has to be approved to go ahead and get his money back. And if he doesn't find the proof, which would be obviously very hard to find some type of, you know, forensics to prove this when it became a trade the meicher could hold on to the money's misaf. The problem is, what's this case? This animal that he sold has a reyesa, has a flaw. There's something here regarding his animal, which is really similar to the case of the donkey of Shmuel. He sold the donkey, and the donkey has a reyesa. It died. Says the Gemara of Amai, why is this halacha? If you hold like Shmuel, Baal Behema, Laisi Raya, V'noikim. The owner of the animal should bring a proof to hold on to the money that he has already, which is just like the case of the owner of the donkey. What's the case of the donkey? He sold the donkey. Now the donkey's dead. There's a reyes in the donkey. What did Shmuel say? The owner of the donkey has to bring a raya that my donkey wasn't dead. There was nothing wrong with the product that I sold you. Even though it's already by Shimon, the, the original cow owner. Reuben has to bring a raya to hold on to the cow that he already has. So what, how is that any different than the case of this Bryson? Why are you telling me that if the butcher gave the money to Ralph, to the owner of the, of the, of the, of the cows that he's selling him? That he has to bring a raya. No, no, Ralph, the owner of the cows, should have to bring a raya. What I sold you was good to hold on to the monies. It's the same exact case. But you can't. What? But you can't. Yeah, whatever it is. We could or can't. My, the loss would be the, the, to Ralph. Why are you telling me that, that, that the, the, the butcher has to bring a raya? So the Gemara comes up 
and says, you're right, great question, but with the lay off top the dummy, we told him what the butcher didn't give any money. Meaning, when we said this aloha of Amit Mechamveiroi, who were we talking about? We told him about the owner of the animals, where he's trying to get his money from the butcher. So basically, he gave it to him on credit. He brought him all the animals and the truck unloaded. He got Julio bring all the cows. Ralph was not, I'm not trusting Julio with the money. So then, a week later, he comes. So he comes to the butcher, butcher said, I'm not paying you for this. It's a trade because I couldn't do anything with these animals. What do you mean? I sold it to you. It must have happened later. Well, you might smell a bay, right? A lovely baby ride. But if it was the other way, no, no, no. If it was the other way, you're right. The butcher would not have to bring a riot. Ralph would have to prove his point that what he sold was kosher, just like Shmuel's Allah. So he must says, my Pascha, what are, you, how, what are you talking about? We do see to, to, be, uh, to be definitive like this. In other words, if you're telling me that the Tana holds, that the Raya is always on the seller, on the owner of the animals, as you're trying to say right now, whether he's the mighty, whether he's the maimon, whether he's trying to hold on to the money, trying to collect the money, how you tell me the terminology of the Brites are mighty mecha It's talking about the owner of the animal, and you're calling the owner of the animal always, he's the mighty. Well, how did the Tana see to define the terminology that the one who sells animals is always selling on credit, and he's the mighty? And, and and not the maimed? Would you tell me that he never gets paid? Why are you calling him Hamoitzi Mechavedoi? It could be maimed. It could be trying to hold on to them. I mean, they already got paid. You're trying to tell me he always has to be a riot, either way. So why call him Hamoitzi? He doesn't always do it on credit. So the Gemara says, you're at a different approach. When Rami Bayechaskel came to Babel, Omar, he says, Don't pay attention to these rules and teachings that my brother said in the name of Shmuel. Meaning, this whole halacha that we started on an Aleph regarding the donkey was based on a teaching that Rabbi Yehuda said in the name of Shmuel. Now, Rabbi Yehuda had a brother, Rami, who they were both sons of Yechezkel. So his brother comes along and says, don't pay attention to my brother, what he says in the name of Shmuel. That's not what Shmuel said. This is what Shmuel said. In whoever's domain the suffix popped up, Allah Haraya, on him is the Raya. So therefore, the truth is, not the owner of the donkey has to bring a Raya, the owner of the cow has to bring a Raya, that the donkey died before Mashiach, because where's the suffix happening? In his possession. Because the donkey wasn't found dead until after <coughs> moving, the owner of the donkey really did Mashiach on the potter. And that automatically makes it Shimon's. So our whole discussion that we had was mistaken. It was based on Rabbi Yehuda's version. Rami says, no, it's actually the only the cow has to be Raya. <clears throat> and that's what Vatan the Tunakala. That was the Raya from our Mishnah, a whole different Allah, actually, the opposite, from our Mishnah of the of the of the movement by the Kala. Because like Rashi explains, we had originally explained that we Rabbi Yehuda's version of Shmuel, that the Raya from the Mishnah was like the first of the three interpretations, like Rabbi Laza. And that's what we're trying to discuss, Rabbi Shu, Rabbi Mlil. No, 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 no. Shmuel holds like the way Rava had answered, that the whole Mishnah is one Tana. This is going like a Mlil. And it depends on Kanin Tzikamhayu, where you find it. And the Risha and the Sefer both support Shmuel. Whomever you find the flaw in their domain, they have to bring a Raya. If it's still in the father's household, the father has to bring a Raya. If she really went to the chuppah, which is in the husband's domain, the husband has to bring a riot. And as Rashi adds on, even if they're, they're living by the in-laws, they're still considered in the domain of the husband, which is really the case over here. Which is, it, do, it doesn't make a difference. In who, it, 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 uh, the main point is, it depends on who just shows the suffix pops up. And therefore, that's exactly like Shmuel's halacha, like we're saying over here, that... Who, whoever is Amoy Tzmechaveir Olav Araya is because you're trying to collect from the other because that's where the suffix happened. You have the suffix by you. You have to bring a riot. So the Gemara says, Mason. The Gemara, however, asks from the Brisa. You told me, Macha Chanim says, Boy, Bebe Sakoy Zavachul. He said, If you find a needle in the thickness of the dab in the wall, Amoy Tzmechaveir Olav Araya. Now, here the question is going to go the other way around. Let's say, Ve'i Deloyo of Tavach Tamek. You're telling me that if the butcher did not give money, so obviously you're telling me that Baal Behema. The owner of the animals, he has to bring proof. Umapik, Raf, the owner of the animals, 
If he gave on credit, you tell me he has to be in your right to collect. But my, but why? Sveik and Bashus Tabach is yelling. The the the, the stuff happened by the butcher because he didn't find the trade until he was shafting, which is written by him. And you told me that whoever the suffolk is nailed in, he's the one that has to bring a raya. So why would you tell me that the owner of the cows who sold it, if he sold it on credit, that he would have to bring a raya, but it was nailed by Shosh Then the tabak should have to bring a raya. And then the, the owner of the animal should be able to collect his money, even though he sold it on credit. Says the Gemara, the Yav Tabak Dami. We talk about where the butcher already paid. Which Rashi points out that even if he didn't pay, you're right, the raya would be on him, like we said, because kan nimtz kan But generally, the Tana presumes, and he says unspecific, we're calling the butcher a moitzi, which the Gemara says in my pasket. What do you see fit? Which is the question in the reverse from what we said previously. Why are you calling the butcher always the moitzi? But maybe he maybe he got on credit. He's not the moitzi, then he's trying to hold on to his money. No, says the Gemara, stomach the milsa, generally we could presume that kamad de layov inish duzi, as long as the person does not give money, no one's going to give their animal for free. No one gives on credit. I want to get paid if I'm giving you my animal and you're the butcher. And therefore we're calling the butcher a mighty because he was always going to try to get his money back because he was sure paid. And that's what we're saying that when the butcher is trying to get his money back from the animal, we're going to say he has to make a raya because the topic happened over here by the butcher, not by the owner of the animal. And that's how the halacha is, like Rami was explaining for Shmuel's teaching, that that's just like the halacha of the Mishnah, that like in Lil, according to Rava, that we say, mm-hmm. it goes based on the topic. Now, let's just finish off the Mishnah. The Chacham had said, but Midbrim, when we say that the husband can make a claim, is the moment should say so. It's only if there was, this was private area blemishes, which he would never see such a thing. So then he could say that, you know, if it's out in the open, say the Chum, you can't make a claim. You saw this when you engaged going out to, uh, to the Dave and Busters and you saw her they, on her left arm, you saw something, something private, something that. So you could say, I didn't see, and then you could go ahead and say it's a Mekech So Amr of Nachman, he gives an example, as you can tell him about Isaiah, he says, Benichve, an epileptic, an illness that causes someone to fall down to the ground, and the, it takes time, uh, it doesn't happen all the time, that's kamumit shabasesu I mean, that's like a concealed blemish, because she's very careful at daytime during when it often happens, she doesn't go outside, so it could be that he would never have known about it, and therefore if he discovered this after they're married, he could say mekech tois. But says the Gemara, when we say this, the kefila is man, only if it's, where she happens at, at distinct intervals. I would like to be a but if it doesn't have set times, kamumit shabasesu I mean, obviously she would never know when it would happen, and you would see it at some point or another that she would be having this convulsion, and therefore, that would be like a revealed blemish and would not make, would make such a claim. I don't think I meant it. Thank you for anything.